Um, you know, I, I, w I thought they ought to round some people up and throw them in jail. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, not only in the Congress, but in, uh, but over on Wall Street also. Uh, I was, you know, I thought bankruptcy was the right answer. Uh, what say you? I agree with you. Bankruptcy is the right answer. It's, it serves a very useful purpose. You get rid of the bad investment and the bad debt, and the wor worthwhile assets end up in stronger hands and people who are smart. Today, what we're doing is we're penalizing those who did good investments, taxing them to prop up the bad investments. So it's very, very bad. But I think this, this whole mess that we have there is a good demonstration of the lack of difference between the, the two parties and their leadership, because immediately McCain and Obama, they rushed back, you know, to vote for it. You know, if McCain had gone back and said, this is outrageous, I'm a conservative, we shouldn't be spending this money, and and if he just said what you said, you know, the yeah. bankruptcies are necessary, yeah. I bet he'd be up 10 points. I think he would, too, uh, Dr. Paul. Absolutely. Uh, let's let's move on here to the, the housing situation. Um, I guess maybe what is the answer in this economic crisis as far as you're concerned? Well, the, the quicker you allow prices to get back to where they're supposed to be and let the supply and demand uh, take care of the problem, the better. So. Propping prices up are the worst thing in the world. This is what they did in the Depression, and that's why it took so long to get over the Depression. So prices of houses got too high, and we're doing everything possible to prop them up and to stimulate housing. Uh, but we don't need that. We have too many houses, so we want prices down, and the houses should go, should go into the hands of the people who've saved some money and people who deserve the houses rather than the people who borrowed all this money, then borrowed against their mortgages, assuming the prices would go up forever. Uh, but the worst thing we can do is, is prop up all the people who made the mistakes and even forcing them to do it, uh, forcing them to take a new mortgage or, you know, the, the person that made the mortgage, it's breaking of contracts. And the Constitution is very clear that we're not to violate uh, contracts. So I, I think the commitment of this $5 trillion is a very, very serious mistake. I think it's going to really hurt the dollar. I think it's going to bring back a tremendous amount of inflation. And until we wise up, all we're going to do is prolong the agony. Congressman Ron Paul is our guest here, along with uh, United States Senate candidate um, Bob Bird's on the phone also. Uh, let me go to this. Uh, uh, Congressman Paul's endorsed here on the show. Uh, candidate Bob Bird, and we appreciate that. Uh, let's let me ask you about Ted Stevens, uh, uh, Congressman. Should Ted Stevens step down? Mm -hmm. Well, I would. I guess personally, I would think that would be the wise thing to do. Uh, I, I think for me to advise, you know, the people in Alaska, what their senator ought to do. I think the people in Alaska ought to put the pressure on them to do it. But yeah, I think he's at the point now where. You know, not only was he indicted, he was convicted, and but you know he has appeals, and there's an election coming up. So I guess uh, if people believe he ought to step down, they can decide that on Tuesday. How much so uh, they could vote for Bob, and that would be his their message. Yes, yeah, I agree. Uh, a support for Bob Bird would be an important message. Uh, let me ask you this about the deficit, the ten trillion dollar deficit, and all. Stevens is a king of pork. Um, What's your belief about all the pork and how Stevens has handled it? Well, I guess he's been rewarded rather well over all those years. I don't know how many years he's been in, but people in Alaska like that. So they like a system where you go down there and they, they reward you for being a good errand boy. I have, I have a, this, uh, you know, somewhat of a different opinion about what they call voting for earmarks than a lot of conservatives. I have never voted for any earmarks because I vote against all the appropriation bills. But my position on earmarks is that's what Congress is supposed to do. You know, we're not supposed to give the money to the executive branch. If, if we didn't have the Stevens and others doing this and trying to earmark things, which should be out in the open, then the earmarks are behind the scenes and they're behind by the bureaucrats and the executive branch of government. But overall, I don't even think the government should be doing those things, so that's why I vote... I vote on principle that the that Congress has an obligation to earmark every penny. Let, let's let me do this. Let me take a call from uh, Ernie here on line right. one. Let me take a couple calls here. Hopefully, the All right. Congressman will have just a minute with us. Uh, Ernie, go ahead. You're on with Congressman Ron Paul. 
Ernie, let's go to uh, JR on line three. JR, real, welcome to the program. JR, are you there? Uh, we, JR, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, you're on with Congressman Ron Paul and Bob Bird. Yes, sir. I uh, just had one question. How do you feel about uh, our uh, role with Israel? With Israel? Yes. Um, I think we should treat Israel like every other country. Uh, we should uh, treat them with respect. Uh, we should trade with them. We should be friends with them. We should uh, have interchange, go back and forth, and education opportunities. But just like I don't believe in foreign aid for anybody, I, I wouldn't send Israel any foreign aid. I think they're overly dependent on us. And when they want to do things on their own, either defend their borders or develop friendships and treaties, like they've been working rather hard to get along with Syria. They won uh, secretly. They've been trying to have a have an agreement there, and we're outraged by that. So we tell them they're not allowed. So I don't like I don't like that. I think Israel should be on their own, but uh, I don't think we should be uh, giving them any money either. All right, quickly, let's go to Gene on line four, and uh, take the call here for the congressman. Uh, Gene, go ahead. All right. Hi. It's good to talk to you both. Yep. Uh, I have a concern. I understand where the um, where Ron Paul is coming from on earmarks, etc. But the one thing that no one ever realizes, and in fact, most of the people in Anchorage, Alaska, or anywhere in Alaska, that when we became a state 50 years ago, we weren't ready to be a state. We were nothing, but we had all the resources. We had everything else. The Dems had kept us from developing much of anything over the years. And much at the time of statehood was promised by the federal government to help with basic infrastructure. And that primarily is the crux of what all um, Ted has brought into the state in his 40 years in Congress. I would like to answer fulfilling that. those basic all right, hey, needs. Hey, and Gene, I'm, I'm really short on time. And, okay. Uh, yeah, let, let the you Congress... You want me to know where I yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, let the Congressman okay. answer the question. Let me answer that, right, yes. uh, Congressman Paul, and that is, first of all, Ted Stevens has abandoned Alaska's birthright, and every bill to open up Anwar, he has cut it down no, from the mandatory 9010. Shame on you. He has cut it down from the mandatory 9010 in our Statehood Act to 5050. And so that is, a, first of all, the number one thing I will bring if we can open up Anwar. But the second thing is, if you look at Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, the part of the Statehood Act which mandates us surrendering 65% of Alaska to the federal government violates the Constitution. All right. Uh, gentlemen, um, I wanted to uh, see if uh, Ron Paul had any closing comments that uh, he wanted to share with the people of Alaska. A lot of people listening here today. Well, uh, only this is that I'm sorry. I haven't gotten up there a little more often, especially in the campaign, because... I think Alaska is a very libertarian, uh, free market state. I believe that there's so many that have respect for the Constitution. And I have a lot of friends up there. All I want to say is hello to them, and I thank them for all their support. And I think it would be a very productive, worthwhile vote to vote for Bob Bird. There you election. go. Bob Bird, any closing comments? I just want to say that uh, tonight there is a debate where I am not invited because I am not part of the Democratic Republican Party. But you can go to my website. A man called in earlier, yep. www.birdforsenate.com, and you can find out and where you agree and disagree with me. And if you'd like to support, there's a way you can do that. And well, thanks to Dr. Paul personally for his endorsement. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Paul. Appreciate your hard work in the United States Congress. And uh, Bob Bird, thank you for calling in today, and good luck to uh, both of you. Good. Thank nice you. to be with you. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we'll say goodbye to them, and we'll welcome uh, up.